Hi, I'm Michael Yardney and I've got another property market update for you. A lot of people have asked me how I do all these and just to quickly let you know this is my study at home and on the other side of the camera is my beautiful wife Pam and we present these to you once a fortnight. And today what I'd like to do is maybe suggest you imagine for a moment that it's 12 months from today. How will our property markets have fared in 2010? Because that's what I'd like to discuss with you today what to expect from property in 2010. You see, now that it's the beginning of the year, actually it's a bit scary, isn't it? Because by the time you watch this, it's probably going to be more than 5% of the year over. But now that it's the beginning of the year, it's customary to give a forecast. But if there's one thing we've learned from the global financial crisis, it's that economists and analysts are terrible at forecasting the future. Let's be honest, they didn't see the calamity coming nor the quick recovery that followed it. And many economists last year predicted that the Australian property markets would fall in a heap. And they were wrong, weren't they? As overall, our property markets grew really, really strongly last year. Now, I was one of the few who went on the public record this time last year, saying that our residential property markets wouldn't collapse. I'm going to stick my neck out a bit and make some predictions for the coming year. But before I do, let's have a look at how the markets performed in 2009. The latest figures just out from Residex show that the Melbourne property market went gangbusters. It increased in value over the year, the 12 months to December 2009, by 14.25%. Sydney, which had been flat for quite a number of years, we know really has now pulled out of its slump as well. And Sydney property values, or the median price in Sydney anyway, went up 12.82%. Of course, all I'm talking about uh, averages and we know that uh, some properties have well outperformed those numbers and others are not performing as well but I'm just going through the median property values. Darwin again had a bumpy year of 14.92% taking its median price above half a million dollars 505,500 505, for the first time. Brisbane well it didn't do so well last year it only had 5.3% growth but that's median uh, growth and in fact, some properties did much better than that, but the median growth was below its 10-year average of 11.98%, so I think it's going to play catch-up this year, especially since its median value is 471,500, not as high as other places. Canberra did well last year with 8.15% growth, Hobart 5.22, but Perth only had 0.8% growth. So what these figures show you is that the only capital city not clearly moving into now what I'd say a strong capital growth phase is Perth. But when we examine the figures more closely and look at the underlying trends, which is the way you have to do it, Melbourne showed an outstanding 12% capital growth rate in the last six months. Sydney came second with 10.2% growth rate over the last six months, followed by Darwin with 8.5% growth rate in that same period. Now, interestingly, our team at Metropole, the buyers agents who are in the markets all day looking for properties for clients, describe the feeling on the ground as, well, they say it's a bit like being in the middle of a property boom. And if you take the last six months' growth on an annualised basis, you can understand why, as that gives Melbourne a capital growth rate in, order, in the order of I don't know, about 25% and Sydney over 21% growth. Can this type of growth continue? Well, the simple answer is no, not in the long term. This type of growth is double the average long-term trend, and it's unsustainable. Now, of course, it occurred last year because our property markets were driven by increasing consumer confidence, low interest rates, pent-up demand, and a lack of supply of certain sorts of properties. Can this type of growth continue in the short term? Well, I think it can. Because I can't see any obvious end to the same fundamentals that underpinned our markets last year. Well, at least not in the first half of this year. However, as property values keep rising and interest rates increase and affordability starts to go down, this is going to become an issue for owner-occupiers and investors, which should lead to slowing of growth in the second half of 2010. At the same time, more potential home buyers uh, will remain in that overcrowded rental market. And that should see the gradual increase in rental yields because they haven't gone up much over the last year or so. So what does all this mean? Well, I think we're going to end up with a three-tier market as affordability and interest rate increases affect some Australians more than others. 
You see, it's likely that first home owners and those living in the working class areas in the outer suburbs are likely to be affected more. They would be affected more by rising interest rates and affordability. On the other hand, those who own properties in the more affluent suburbs of our capital cities, those that have got will have a strong capital growth, they're going to be sitting on a heap of equity and they're not going to be worried about affordability, are they? These inner and middle ring suburbs are likely to keep performing well again in 2010. And as I said, this is likely to lead to a three-tiered market, especially in Melbourne, Sydney and Brisbane. See, the more affluent suburbs near the city and the water will be the ones will be the ones that become even more expensive and they're going to strongly outperform the averages. As owner occupiers and astute investors chase that small number of properties coming onto the market in those locations. Now, as more and more home buyers and investors find they're priced out of those inner ring suburbs, now I'm not talking about the CBD, I'm talking about the inner ring around the CBD, as they find they're priced out of those, they're going to move to the neighbouring suburbs, they're going to move to the middle ring suburbs. So these are also going to increase in value, but maybe not to the same extent as the inner ring suburbs. However, the outer suburbs, those are usually where they're, they're more home, the interest rate sensitive, and already many are currently struggling to meet their mortgage payments with the likelihood of further increases. Um, I think probably increases in interest rates. I think property values are going to languish in those suburbs. Now, I'm going to be explaining my forecast for this next property cycle and how you can take advantage of the emerging trends at the only round of property seminars or the only round of public seminars I'm going to be conducting in the first half of this year. So if you want to ride the next property wave, and take advantage of the opportunities the next property cycle is going to bring, please click on the link down below to find out about these seminars that I'm going to be conducting with property tax experts Ed Chan and Ken Race. Please click on the link below to find out more. Everyone's talking about the next property boom, and I explain my big picture thoughts in the feature article in this month's property update. So go back to the main page of the property update website to read my predictions of property values to the end of the decade. But as I say in that article, not all properties will increase in value equally. And if, if history repeats itself, and it surely will, not all property investors are going to achieve the results they're looking for. So I'd really like you to join us at these seminars and learn from the experts with a proven track record. So click on the link below to find out all the details, including about the $360 worth of special bonuses you get when you attend, and reserve your place now. Now, over this next year, as the property cycle moves on, I'm going to keep you up to date each fortnight with the changes in future newsletters and in these fortnightly property market video updates. But it's also probably appropriate to remind you that if you really want to take advantage of this next property wave, no one can help you quite like the independent and unbiased property investment strategists at Metropole. Now, I'm really proud of the team because once again, we've been awarded the best property buyers agents in Australia by the readers of Your Investment Property magazine. And we also, for the second year in a row, won the Reader's Award from the readers of Your Investment Property magazine. So whether you're looking to buy, invest, refinance, rent, renovate or build, you're going to benefit from our services because we've got no vested interest or hidden agenda. Remember, we've got no properties to sell, but we've got access to every property on the market. So if you want to find out a little bit more about what's happening in your local market and what our research suggests is in store, apart from the big seminars that I'm going to be conducting personally, why don't you join us at one of the property briefings in Melbourne, Sydney or Brisbane where the Metropole team will uh, conduct these fortnightly briefings. Click on the link below and join us at one of those briefings. And by the way, they're free. Now, in the meantime, I'm going to keep you up to date in my daily tweets about property, so you can also follow me on Twitter by clicking on the link down below too. Look forward to keeping you up to date with these regular property updates. Keep in mind our seminars coming around Australia in the capital city near you in March and April. And for a small group of you, if you're an advanced investor, if you're a businessman or an entrepreneur, keep the last weekend in May free 29th of May to the 2nd of June for Wealth Retreat 2010 where a small group of property investors, entrepreneurs and business people are going to have an intensive five day experience with Australia's leading experts in property, tax, finance, psychology. Tell you more about Wealth Retreat down the track but keep that weekend free.